oh, I don't know, 18 degrees. I mean, there was there wasn't any black ice down the road, and the thaw was pretty. You know, there wasn't any ice. We were having a pretty mild winter, but still, you know, when you're out on the road when it's that degrees, you know, you have to subtract um, 10, 15 mi uh, You know, 10 to 15 degrees when you're out on two, you know, wheels, and whoo, that was um, that was a trip. I mean, we rode for about 100 miles that day. I thought I was going to fall off the bike just from being frostbitten. I ride year-round up here, and I live in the Chicago area. I ride all through the winter. Actually, last year I had to park it for about six weeks. But uh, what part of the country? Yeah, we have more you have fucking motorcycles. Probably got a heater built into it. <laughs> it's got everything else, right? What's your motorcycle weigh? Three hundred pounds. Um, Kansas City, but um, I've got like um, you know those heated gloves, and I've got heated socks. As long as my hands and my feet are um, warmed, I'm okay. Yeah, those are the weak spots: the hands, the feet, followed by the eyes. I mean, there's always a, some cold air that leaks under the helmet, and it goggles, dry, my dear possible. man, goggles. Well, I haven't found any, any that really work for me, and I wear glasses. Yeah, well, I mean, you can get the anyway. goggles. What's the that, fucking you know? point? <laughs> just, there's no point in riding under these conditions. None. It's stupid. Sorry. Oh, Fail all over yeah, the place. Buy a Volkswagen. There's no fucking point in riding a motorcycle <laughs> in the fucking winter. You're out of your fucking mind. So oh, it's I'll dumb you enough what, in the summer, the but it's preposterously bike, stupid in the winter. Gary, you get on the back of my bike and you ride, I bitch, agree. and you'll be a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, but it's a question I often ask myself. What is it that keeps me riding through the winter? I've got a perfectly functional car with, you know, heater and all that shit. Well, um, Uncle, I, I mean, as I said, you know, you put on, you know, you put on the protective, um, you know, apparel, you put on your goggles, I mean, you, you protect as much open, you know, exposed skin as you can, I mean, it's actually pretty fun, I mean, you know, the, the winter air is pretty crisp and clear, and, you know, you, you can have a good time, you know, riding out through the country and stuff. Yeah, right. And so I'm going to buy a convertible and I'll take the top down in the middle of the winter. No, oh, I well, no, that's different. That's just being that. a pussy. I don't think I would do that. I don't think I would. Merry Christmas. Well, the point is that's just being a pussy. I don't think I ever remember doing that in my Camaro. Yeah, I mean, the uh, cool thing about a motorcycle, riding my motorcycle to work, is that there's a no parking space that belongs to me, and it's exactly right in front of the door. I don't have exactly. to worry about it. Exactly. But, on the other hand, I've spent 15 minutes yeah, lazy. gearing up and, and taking off the gear. So I probably yeah, don't exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you're uncomfortable. It's Plus, exactly. you're probably, what? It's you're, enough. you're increasing your risk, your per mile risk, probably by, what, three or four times. Well, I mean, it, and I mean, it is a matter of pride because not too many women ride. All right, well, new subject. My balls. My balls. So, some other addiction. Yeah, well, it's all addictions. You could turn off your mic. Balls. How about that? Balls, guy. What do you think? All right, I'll kick you. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave for you. Okay, well, I'll kick you first, just for fun. Ugh, 2012, yeah, right, whatever. Uh, I don't think we're going to get through 2011. <laughs> this 2012 shit is just amazing. Uh, it would be funny, though, if we do end up having, like, the stock market goes down 70% in 2011. That'll sort of end all the 2012 talk, right? Uh, you know, if we can get the Great Depression to hit a year earlier. But look around on the internet. There are people who've devoted their lives to 
2012. You know, they're, I mean, they're so into the shit until, of course, New Year's Day 2013 comes along, and who knows, it'll be something else. But, you know, it's... It, it, yeah, well, the it, end of the world's coming in December, up. what is it, 21st, 2012, so what the fuck? Right, but part yeah, of the time, well, yeah, well, somebody mentioned the Y2K, and that was almost as much fun. But it, it has to be something about, you know, the same part of us that just enjoys watching horror movies. You know, and everybody knows it ain't real, but it's, you know, it's fun to get yourself worked up over something. That's got to be what it is. I mean, it probably goes deeper than that. It probably has, you know... I mean, it's like the end of the Roman Empire kind of thing. I guess that still is in human psychology, this this fact that we're, you know, there's this doom cliff that's always hanging somewhere. And so everybody's just going to hang in on some Mayan prediction. And, and it's just, the, I mean, I think the great irony is, is that we have this peak oil economic collapse thing, you know, we're hanging right on the crevices of it. So instead of, instead of looking at this real cause of real mayhem, you know, they're looking at this completely artificial, silly, somehow the planets are all going to implode or something kind of bullshit. Like, you know, the disaster is going to be completely human. You know, it's not going to have anything to do with the environment or the cosmos or anything else. It's just going to have to do with humans. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, about peak oil, it's, you know, it's a long-term issue. It's not a short-term issue. You know, it, it is not going to hit all of a sudden. It's going to it's going to make itself felt increasingly, increasingly over time, and there may be some mitigate or avert it, but um, it just does not have the drama of, you know, December whatever the hell it was, 2012. People seem to want that, you know, that the, the bell tone. Well, they've been. I mean, they've been. Um... Call, I mean, they've been predicting the end of the world since, you know, humans were cognizant enough to record their own history. I mean, but they were right I mean, a lot of times. I mean, I so just, I that's the point. They've been the right in the past, haven't they? All right. I mean, there are countries that had their end of the world. There are cultures that we can't even pick up the pieces. They're so fucking fail. Look what happened to the fucking Egyptians. I don't. They're not even Egyptians, right? What do you call the the pharaohists? Uh, you know, they really had a bad time. Uh, what, know, what, what, what happened to the Egyptians, Gary? They really had Well, I'm just saying, the guys who wrote the hieroglyphics, whatever that that civilization was, I mean, they, they were so annihilated, we couldn't even read their language anymore. And here, the most successful civilization on Earth, and yet we couldn't even read their fucking goddamn language anymore. Um, I mean, we wiped out the Incas and the Mayas. They got they 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 they, they, ran, they went they crashed right into their 2012. The the Egyptians. It's funny. The, I mean, that's a funny example of a crashed civilization because it never crashed. I mean, they got conquered a few times by Nubians and then by Assyrians, and then by Greeks and then by Ro or Macedonians and then by Romans, and then by Arabs. But uh, the Nile Valley has always been a, you know, a densely populated place from 5,000 years ago right down to the present. So I don't see any crash. I understand that, Remy, but, um, uh, you know, it's like if America stopped speaking English and we spoke Spanish, okay, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be America anymore. I mean, you'd have to say that something dramatic happened to their culture. I'm just saying for a culture to lose, for a country as big and as successful as Egypt was, for you to so annihilate that culture so so disseminate it so so whatever take it over destroy it and you know like i said it, just, it was gone it was as gone as alexandria it was i mean it was just annihilated i mean when you you know in a in a matter of under a hundred years you can't find somebody who can speak the language who can read the hieroglyphics that to me is pretty amazing well no i mean they were not annihilated and you know, the Rosetta Stone was the 19th century. They were probably writing in hieroglyphics, maybe up, maybe up to the second or third century. You know, so a, a lot of time had passed between 
the you know the time when people stopped writing hieroglyphics and the time they finally figured out how to write it again. But civilization had not stopped there. Now I will bet, you know, if you you know compare 19th century Egypt to second century Egypt, you'd see a lot of similarities. But well, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I, to, to me, to, that argument is as empty as saying that civilization still exists in Mexico. Okay, well, it's not Inca, and it certainly isn't Mayan, okay? So, I mean, yeah, it might still be civilization, but it's not, not what it was. And I'm just saying that this transition eliminated, destroyed, um, annihilated, terminated a fucking culture. The, the culture didn't survive. The civilization known for that way of life was annihilated. <laughs> yes, just, people still yeah, stole yeah, the just, resources. Just, people just, still right. use the still Nile River. Now. Yes, people still live there. Of course, it's a very fertile place yeah, I, to I, live. I, I'm just so. saying, the people are gone. The, the, the culture is gone. They're as, as dead as a real American Indian. Yeah, though, but it's, you know, as long as they yeah, keep rehashing the old bullshit, you know, you still have to deal with it. Let me speak for one minute here, and then I'll turn it over to you. But, um, you know, Mexico is a different story. 90% of the people who were alive there, I mean, 90% of, the, of that population died in the, let's say, century and a half after Europeans showed up. So there really was a transplantation of, you know, a, an old world culture into the new world. But that never happened in Egypt. You never had that collapse of population. You had, you know, you had new cultures implanted on top of it. <laughs> well, I think that's this, uh, just another word for, um, uh, what, mass murder? I mean, come on. I mean, so when 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 Napoleon showed up, or the, the you know whoever, um, you you would you're just you're saying that the they just transition to a new culture? I mean, is that what we just call it? No, I mean, Napoleon didn't do shit. He didn't, he didn't destroy anything. He didn't build anything. But he was there for a year and a half. Well, he shot the nose off the Sphinx, I think. I think, I think they blame him for that one. Um, a jackass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... You know, well, whatever. I don't want to argue it to death. I just, to, to me, it seems. Um, I mean, I'm not for it. There, look, there, there's some people lamenting that I guess there's a certain number of languages dying every year, you know, human languages, and uh, there's no one's teaching them to their kids, and uh, yeah, it's okay with me. But to me, that's a little different than. I mean, I just mean the, the pharaoh is Egypt was a was a culture, and I don't even know if it was a race, but, you know, I don't know how much of that got retained or how much of that was you know, eliminated. I think a lot of it was retained. I think a lot of it. You know, probably, probably down to the present if you really look at it, but um, anyway, Recovering Zombie is owed a chance at the mic. Huh? What do you, I mean, um, what do you want me to say? Well, that's entirely up to you. Well, the thing of it is, um, you know, having been born and raised into a fundamentalist, repressive, constrictive um, cult, I mean, you know, once you learn um, history outside of what you've been taught, you know, you've learned, you know, different ways of thinking, and, you know, the first thing that I learned is that, you know, what was taught to me was not necessarily the truth, and that um, human history has pretty much been the same since, you know, humans learned to record um, their thoughts and their histories. And, you know, their whole end of the world prediction is just bullshit, you know, considering that people have been calling for the end of the world as soon as they you know, were able to record um, language, and, you know, I, I just, you know, what do you want me to say, because the whole thing is Well, what, what, if, what if we have a nuclear war in 10 years, okay? I mean, does that uh, qualify as the end of the world? So then they are right. Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying that the I, idea I that people would look at the way we are living. By the end of the world.